brothers and sisters, as we gather on this Palm Sunday, we do so in the midst of this Passion Tide as we walk step by step alongside our Lord. In today's reflection, we will consider briefly the seventh station, Jesus Falls the Second Time. Isaiah 63, 9 says, So he became their Savior in every affliction. He was not a messenger or an angel, but he himself who saved them. Because of his love and pity, he redeemed them himself, lifting them and carrying them all the days of old. We see in the station today our Lord modeling for us the virtue of perseverance. This virtue plays a critical role in our spiritual lives, for each one of us, as sinners, falls time and again. And our Lord has come to redeem us from these sins. I think one of the things that I encounter most hearing confessions on behalf of the church is that those who confess the same sin time and again. If we think into our own hearts, the last time we went to confession and the time before that, we will often see these recurring sins and vices, these themes within our spiritual life, reappearing time and again. And there's a temptation to discouragement and even despair, despairing of the power that God's grace has to tr transform our lives and to lift us from our sin. But it's also indicative of the need that we have for a Savior, that we continue to fall in the same way. If we think of the act of contrition that we are asked to make at the end of our confession, what do we resolve? We resolve to go forth and sin no more. And this is a difficult resolution to make, but this is at the heart of what it means to seek the Father's forgiveness, is to say that we believe not only in the absolution we will receive in confession, but in the grace that he will unite within us to go forth and sin no more. If we think of all the times that our Lord encountered and healed the many people throughout the course of the Gospels, he would heal them first of their bodily ill, and then heal them of their spiritual wound sending them forth with the mandate, go forth and sin no more. Our Lord believes quite sincerely that the healing that he renders within our hearts gives us the power to enter into a deeper communion with him in our prayer. And this is really what drives the heart of why we must return to confession. It is not that our Lord loves us more after confession, as if to say, because we are now unblemished, he will bestow his grace and his love more readily upon us. For we know that the Lord is the good shepherd who goes forth to get even the one sheep who has gone astray. But instead, what we recognize, that confession is an opportunity for us to unite our hearts more securely to the Lord's, to identify not only our need for him, but our desire to love him more purely. And so this is what confession serves. Confession serves as that opportunity to draw back into communion with the Lord. I think so often in our lives of faith, we go through periods, perhaps months or even years, of difficulty in our prayer. Every time we try to pray, it feels dry and it feels pointless. And so we have to ask ourselves, when was the last time I went to confession and made a sincere confession to the Lord? Because it's only in resolving and repairing that relationship that we are able then to commune with him. So just think of your own lives your spouses or your children, your friends and co-workers, when there has been some sort of strife or struggle, the communication is often ruptured. When that confession is made to the other and forgiveness is sought and received, the communication is restored. And so in our own lives of prayer, as we desire to enter more deeply into communion with the Lord, we have to do so in the action of the penitent. We have to be like beggars before God, we simply extend our hands to receive the grace and blessing that he offers us. So as our Lord falls a second time and rises, he shows us the importance of perseverance. We too must persevere by making frequent confessions and seeking the Lord's forgiveness and mercy. May God bless and keep you.